as an indigenous person, as a black person, if I say my life matters, am I now politicized? It's political for me to say my life matters. Black lives mattered. I didn't con uh, intend to have a uh, continue with the show or with episodes focused on issues re re, uh, related to black lives or black lives matter or racism or any of the sort. However, it's necessary when I hear statements made recently by a representative from the state of Wisconsin, Glenn Grothman, when he was critiquing the recent stimulus plan, which is wide open to critique. There's so many things to critique can never make everyone happy in such a large uh, republic as ours um, with, with any policy or plan. However, he added a bit to it, to his critique. Um, it seems he thinks that uh, the increase in, uh, for certain credits were a response from pressure from the group Black Lives Matter. He says, I bring it up because I know the strength that Black Lives Matter had in this last election. I know it's a group that doesn't like the old fashioned family. I am disturbed that we have another program here in which we're increasing the marriage penalty. We got to talk about this, people. Sorry, not sorry. This is Let's Chew the Gum. Let's talk. Welcome to Let's Chew the Gum. I'm your host, Protocol. We talk a lot about a lot of things in this show. While we chew the gum, and just like every show, we always have something for your mind. 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 Something for your mind. 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 Something for your mind. Something for your mind. Welcome to this edition of Let's Chew the Gum, the podcast where we talk about everything from A to Z while we chew the gum. I know many of you that listen all the time know why this show is called Let's Chew the Gum. But for my new listeners who frequently send emails asking what's in the title, Let's Chew the Gum, it's a metaphor, a metaphor for let's talk like let's chew the fat, let's chew the gum. Right. But it's also a little clap back at all the years I was told I couldn't chew gum and talk or or, you know, just this idea that, th that that's rude. I like to chew gum when I talk or do any type of uh, activities. It gives me a nice rhythm, moderates my breathing. So I like that. Anyway, feel free to send your emails to let's chew the gum at gmail dot com. Um, if you have show topics that you'd like to hear discussed on the air or if you'd like to be a guest on the show. We are today, as I said in the uh, prelude, um, going to be discussing issues around the latest statement uh, or the statement from uh, uh, Representative uh, Glenn Grothman of Wisconsin uh, making the statement about uh, Black Lives Matter not liking the old fashioned family. And so I want to break that down because. What I understand, first of all, I would say he has a right to say whatever he wants to say, believe what he wants to believe. But when you are in a position of authority, um, you're responsible for the reactions of what happens after you issue statements. And I'm going to say that his statement was irresponsible, short sighted and reckless. Period. Um, to say that or to make the inference that black lives matter or individuals associated with it don't like the old fashioned family, meaning a, a two traditional two parent household is ridiculous, first of all. And I'm glad that the delegate from I believe it was the Virgin Islands spoke up and, and made a retort to what he said. But this uh, has to be addressed on multiple platforms. 
as I said, I didn't intend to have this show topic today, but I think it would be irresponsible for me if I didn't talk with you, uh, my listeners, about this statement and why I say it's destructive and irresponsible. Uh, First of all, for me to say or for anyone to say that's a black person, that their life matters should not be politicized. Secondly, not every person that's black is a member of the organization Black Lives Matter. There's an organization Black Lives Matter. And then there's just the general statement Black Lives Matter. And if I say Black Lives Matter, it doesn't mean I'm affiliated with the organization, which I'm not. I'm not affiliated. Don't know everything there is to know about them. But I know that my life matters and I know a lot about them. His contention is that they're a Marxist group <clears throat> and that their idea of being against the traditional family is uh, in favor of a more communal type. Let's let's drop some historical facts about why that may be. First of all, many societies were communal based Native American and African societies, right? The extended family. Read it in your history books. Um, it's, it's a way of life. It's not political. It's for survival, the essence of survival. Let's look at the system that created a lot of these necessities specifically for African-Americans. One of the most horrible aspects of slavery in America, aside from the beatings, the rapings, etc., etc., was the breakup of the family. You wake up and your children are sold away. Your husband is sold away. Your wife is sold away. Um, everyone that you that you've known is sold and, and it could be at any time. And for that to happen for hundreds of years, if you want to talk about what broke down the black family structure, let's start there. If African-Americans weren't able to rely on what he calls the old fashioned. Family. If we weren't allowed to rely on those structures, it's part and parcel due to the effects of slavery. Many blacks not knowing where to find family members after slavery ended spent years searching and looking for new families, the inherent and generational trauma of being dispossessed of families. Not by choice. So there was a reliance on the extended family. It was necessary for economic, social, spiritual support. Very necessary. So let's let's start there. We could continue on. We could look at uh, laws that uh, effectively broke up the family even more. We can look at early welfare programs where um, if a family was in need and they had to get on welfare, there couldn't be a, a man in the home. A husband couldn't be there. So you, you're forcing families that are desperate for economic vitality to assume a role of an absent parent or to incentivize the breakdown of black families. Let's start. Let's let's start and continue there. So. You want to go further? We we can look at uh, the war on drugs that disproportionately affected black families and broke up uh, further family structures. You want to look at the Iran Contra scandal and the whole scandal involving crack cocaine being infused into black neighborhoods uh, via the federal government. This is not controversial to say it was should it be controversial that it was done. But you can read the voluminous uh, articles and, and, and documents and archives on this topic. Movies, documentaries that have been made about it. I think uh, Senator or Representative Grothman should do some homework there. It was reckless what he said, because what I understand as a teacher of uh, government 
one of the, one of the things I teach. I have a lot of students that I'm exposing to uh, the process. A lot of students that are for the first time um, listening to leaders in government to hear what they have to say. And for the unsophisticated or untrained mind to hear a statement like that, Black Lives Matter are against the traditional family. That's like creating another boogeyman. That's that's what's usually done in, in war. You remove the humanness from your potential opponent and <clears throat> make stories up and characters caricatures up about those individuals and it dehumanizes them and it makes them easy targets for those that can't see the reality. Because if they don't have a soul, if they aren't human, they're just an enemy and, and I have, you know, there's no problem to get rid of them. That's how this starts. Every time. The same thing Hitler did with the Jews from the early brainwashing of young, innocent, malleable German kids being indoctrinated. So now folks that are not necessarily skilled in critical thinking or or deep analysis or historical analysis, they may hear a statement like that. And what do they do? They go and repeat it. Do you know Black Lives Matter is against the family structure? Do you know black people are against the family structure? The, 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 the representative was making the statement to say that it was a marriage penalty because these earned credits were increasing for uh, persons who are single, people in non-traditional family settings. And, and personally, I don't know why you'd have to politicize families. There may have been so many other ways that he could have made his point, but his point was twofold. Not only was he against the particular portions of the stimulus plan, that's fine. But to throw black people in there in a national setting and sending off more cold words, right? Creating enemies where, where none exist. That's irresponsible. And he needs to be held accountable. And it's shameful that there are more individuals around him, colleagues that are publicly holding him accountable for those statements. Now, again, I'm not affiliated with Black Lives Matter, the organization. But as a black person, my life matters. Now, if they want to claim what he claims, uh, you know, their statement that uh, some of the followers were trained Marxists, whatever. That's that's of no consequence to me. People are entitled to have their own political views and economic structure preferences that me to me doesn't matter. The point is, again, for that, he made such a generalized statement. To where, again, he put the lives of countless black people in danger or at least their reputation or the perception that others would have of them in a time like just like all times when our nation, our world should be focused on healing, mutual support. Furthermore, the idea that he has that this is a attack on marriage. The fact of people relying on extended families is not an attack on marriage. It's a necessity for a lot of people. Single parents that may work, that need child care. Where do they, where do they find it affordably? Oftentimes it's a family member, a grandmother, an aunt and uncle. Oftentimes, many families are uh, sometimes forced, sometimes by choice, move together and live together to pool their resources. That's family. That's community. So when when the when he says that Black Lives Matter as an organization challenges the traditional uh, old fashioned family and uh, that that phrase old fashioned, that's cold for me too. you don't don't try it. But the fact of him saying that they oppose 
the westernized version of a family two parent household. I, I, I would say, and I don't speak for them, but that's a bunch of bull. Just because you recognize that there are a lot of families that are non-traditional, whether they're extended families, single parent families, mixed families, whatever. The fact is, it's a family. And you don't get to legislate what that is. You don't get to deny the existence of how others are trying to survive and are forced to survive, especially when it was the laws, practices and policies of agencies and governments and individuals that schemed and plotted to destroy those particular groups in the first place. The blood is on. Historically, your hands and because you stepped into the realm of politics and decided to get into the institution that is responsible for making policies. Whatever you do in there, the blood is on your hands. The responsibility, the onus is on you as a representative of the people to do their will. Now, is that the will of the people in your in your jurisdiction, your constituents? Then perhaps there's something to be said about that, too. There's something to be said about that, too. It's, it's really I'm, I'm st sitting here uh, and it was silent for a moment because I was just shaking my head thinking about, again, the irresponsibility of that statement. People like you created these conditions that many poor people, not just blacks, live in. Blacks are not the only people that sometimes live communally for mutual support. And how dare you make that a, a an issue or a problem that there are individuals and families that are stepping up to support each other. Right. We hear the phrase, it takes a village. Where do you where do you think that comes from? So when you hear folks saying that it takes a village, that that's the family, that's the extended family. Is that inherently Marxist? Would would folks like that, if they are Marxist, would they have to resort to those tactics if there was equity in in the in the capitalist realm in terms of access, sustainability, equitable distribution of resources and information? Would people have to drastically and radically uh, plan for alternatives? So before uh, Representative Growthman, before you make statements like that, I would suggest that you consider what it is that caused groups like that to form or what it is that caused family structures to exist the way they do. Now, to the politics of what you were saying, you believe that it's a, an attack on marriage that some of these credits are being extended to non-traditional, meaning two parent homes, that single people would be able to access funding. As if there's not a need for them to have those funds or to have those funds extended. And it's not to say that married couples don't need the help. But on the whole, I would think on the whole, I would think that single folks might need some additional help. There's that equity part. It's not saying that because I'm married, that I'm doing better than someone single. That, that's ludicrous to say. But single folks that qualify, if they weren't qualified before to receive funding because you made funding available and <clears throat> excuse me, based upon a traditional two parent home. There's something, excuse me, something to be said about that as well. Because, again, when we look at policies and government interventions, again, whether it's COINTELPRO or whether it's welfare reform, the war on drugs. When we look at those those programs and interventions, most of them, not most, each one I suggested has a huge responsibility for the breakdown and breakup of black families. And so now laws are passed that that uh, 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 support 
the institution of marriage. All for it. All for it. But that should not exclude parents in a non-traditional setting. Single parents, mixed families, etc. That's ludicrous. Those are that's where the underlying codes are. That speaks specifically to the discrimination that's inherent in his statement, which is why so many people should be outraged by his statement. Because, again, there are particular vulnerable populations that are affected by those policies that, again, that have forced them in many ways to become non-traditional single families with the necessity to be supported by a communal structure. Again, it wasn't my intention to have a, a this topic today. It's another indication of why I say black history is not just to be taught during Black History Month, because we have to continually be aware of all history. But specifically, we have to continue to counteract and point out statements such as these that sometimes go on unnoticed. If you're not watching the news, if you're not reading the papers, if you're not reading the the uh, news sites where this information is coming out, you, you don't know that. And then you see guys like this or anyone like this on a campaign trail. And, and, and this particular day, they say something fashionable that gives them some popularity or they come and kiss your babies or wear your favorite team shirt or say your name on uh, in an auditorium. And now you're the biggest fan, but you have no idea of their underlying political um, philosophy. We can do better. Representative Grothman, you can do better. I'm not even going to say you should be ashamed of yourself because if that's how you feel, that's how you feel. And I'm, I'm not mad that you said what you said. It, it makes me not happy either. But what it does is brings me awareness. It brings folks awareness as to where you stand. And I know, I know that there are lots of people that stand where you are and, and believe how you believe. And I would just say to everyone, be a little bit more critical be a little bit more analytical about these statements and about the historical precedents that have created these conditions where groups like Black Lives Matter. Again, I have no affiliation, but where groups like that um, have their foundations or have their ideologies. Right. It wasn't until after the murder of Trayvon Martin and the non reaction to by the uh, judicial system to. Uh, Zimmerman that Black Lives Matter was created. And, and but now that, that's a whole different entity. So this show is not about Black Lives Matter. This is about the fact that as a black person, my life does matter. Anyone, all lives matter, of course. Anyone that politicizes that. It's probably a result of. The fact that. Ignorance abounds. And they can't differentiate between an organization with a noun and an individual with the verb. I'm going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. You're listening to Let's Chew the Gum. Something for your mind, 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 mind. mind. something for your mind. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast also with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So what are you waiting for? Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. OK, and we're back. Thank you for listening to that uh, important information from our sponsors. Definitely want to keep the show going. Uh, if you'd like to sponsor, you can go to uh, anchor.fm slash protocol. Also, there's a slot there if you'd like to make a donation um, to the show, if you like the content that's coming out, no matter where you are in the world. And um, speaking of which, a big shout out to all the listeners worldwide. You're so much appreciated. Your comments are appreciated. Please keep them coming. 
Again, this is Let's Chew the Gum, the podcast where we talk about everything from A to Z while we chew the gum. Um, email us at let's chew the gum at gmail.com again for show topic ideas or if you'd like to be a guest or just to submit your questions uh, or re- reactions to anything you've heard on any of the episodes. Um, feel free to check out season one, all 16, 17 episodes from season one. And then this uh, sixth episode of season two, all of which can be heard here where you're listening or on most podcast platforms. <clears throat> so I'm going to jump back into it. You know, we had before the break been talking about the statements made by the legislator from Wisconsin, legislator uh, Grothman. And uh, just the idea of how irresponsible it was. I, I want you to, to understand it's, it wasn't only irresponsible because he threw uh, black people in there as being anti-traditional family. But um, his position would be anti anyone who's uh, sensitive to the fact or the necessity of a non-traditional family, an extended family in terms of how he's looking at this as an attack on marriage. Um, Just uh, just not good. Not good. I want to encourage all of you to be come involved with uh, your local state federal governments if that's something that you um, are able to do to make sure that we hold individuals accountable for statements like that divisive statements that um, you know while many of us are are pushing to build uh, cohesive bridges and to you know organize ourselves around like-mindedness and and good values um, irrespective of race and class there's always some that are trying to um, tear it down. And so we want to be aware of that and hold those folks accountable. Okay. And that is much appreciated. So as I go on, I I don't know what more I could say about what the person said. Um, Let me share some quotes with you from some other folks that chimed in on it. These were uh, pretty interesting, uh, interesting from the standpoint of just understanding how people view uh this particular topic so hold on a second i want to want to pull some up uh, just a few that i i looked at this morning <clears throat> excuse me one second let's see let's hear from someone that maybe supports his point of view here we go so these were I don't know if these are students or or what, but uh, McClanahan of Princeton, U- Princeton University and Gary Sandifer of the University of Wisconsin found the average child raised by a mother and grandmother is doing about the same as the average child raised by a single mother. OK. Does that mean that the grandmother is not helping or does that mean uh, the grandmother is supporting. I don't I don't know what we can get from that. In the absence of both parents, children raised. This is their for a quote from their writing In the absence of both parents, their findings, I should say, in the absence of both parents, children raised by their extended kin, such as an aunt or uncle, are significantly more likely to have, in the words of one study. Higher levels of internalizing problems, including loneliness and sadness when compared to those raised by married parents. Another establishing established finding in sociological research is, I'm sorry, that fathers play a pivotal role in children's, uh, I would imagine that says development. So what are we saying? That they're saying that kids that come, that are in extended families suffer more than people from married and married couples. That, that, that could be true. <clears throat> um, typically, if, if kids are raised by an aunt or an uncle, more than likely there was something going on in their immediate family. But does that mean we shouldn't recognize those aunts and uncles and grandparents and whatever um, as family units that are deserving of support? And if somehow we pass legislation that provides some equity and support in those types of families that we're against marriage or against the institution of marriage or traditional families, that's like nonsense. It's utter nonsense. Right. 
of course, um, uh, children and families with both parents, married parents, of course, is more than likely if it's a healthy environment that they're going to do better and feel better and have less internalizing of problems, <clears throat> including loneliness and sadness. Likely, again, children that are in those positions that are not with their parents, maybe there is some loneliness and sadness. Maybe they aren't with their other siblings and their parents. That's that's not saying much. But what about the fact that you have family members that are stepping up to support those children? Would it be better that you have them in institutions, orphanages, um, group homes, other settings where they aren't getting uh, care from immediate relatives? I mean, every situation can be looked at individually, you know, on an individual basis. But what exactly are you are they trying to say? It's ludicrous. Is that their justification? Wow. It says uh, continues on Marxist views, <clears throat> excuse me, Marxist view, the living arrangement of the extended family as more conducive to fostering collectivism since it requires conformity to successfully facilitate production. On the other hand, the traditional two parent nuclear family is depicted as an insidious invention of capitalism. <laughs> Where do they get this stuff? Responsible for displacing the communalism of the extended family. <clears throat> that's, that's just ludicrous. So we're supposed to believe that uh, if people are married in a two system family that <laughs> I can't even go on. I, I won't even insult your intelligence. I think we have to get by the way that we can get by. And if that's uh, uh, possible with a two parent family, that's great. And if it's not, you, you have an issue with people collectivizing with their relatives for support, pooling resources. What is with people that don't like cooperation? It's selfishness. Selfishness. Wow. This is a. Maybe from a Black Lives Matter site that someone was trying to cite as a problem. It says we disrupt the Western prescribed nuclear family structure requirement by supporting each other as extended families and villages that collectively care for one another, especially our children, to the degree that mothers, parents and children are comfortable. That makes it Marxist to care for your family because you, you are disrupting the Western prescribed nuclear family. You know, back in the 50s, it was the, you know, the two parents, the, the kids, two kids, white picket fence and a, a, a dog. I don't know. That's the Western prescribed nuclear family that doesn't fit everybody. There's so many. And this is not a black thing. That's the problem. Say all that that you wanted to say about your politics. But why throw black people in there under the bus like that as if they don't care about traditional families? Again, economic conditions, societal factors, programs, policies and practices have all led a lot to the breakdown of the black family. Right. But still, as the delegate said uh, from the Car Car Caribbean, it's still black people have managed to keep their families together and still are working hard to do that. It goes on to say we make our spaces family friendly and enable parents to fully participate with their children. We dismantle the, the patriarchal practice uh, that requires mothers to work double shifts so that they can mother in private, even as they participate in public service work. So we're supporting mothers. We're supporting families, they're saying. Wow. I think some folks should mind the business. That's all. Just mind your business. I mean, if, if that's how you feel, you don't like the idea of, of people cooperating. I, I don't know what to tell you. It's not necessarily my place. I would again, my contention with this whole thing is that he can have his politics about how he believes how the stimulus package of uh, funding should be spent. That's fine. I have no issue. You should. I just did a lesson today with my students about their pay stubs and taxes and where that money goes, how they can look at where that money goes. And if they decide that it's going someplace where they don't want it to go, then that's when they become active. You know, that's when they advocate. That's when they go to their representatives to let them know that's that's how it works. That's great. But this this guy is it's going to step further. 
it's Friday. I, I think I, I've said all I, I want to say about this topic. I think I would like, you know, to, to challenge you all again to pay close attention to what's being said and how it affects others. Pay attention to what's being said and how subtle messages, dangerous messages are, are put into place that can affect others. Pay attention to what's being said so you will understand where people are uh, in, in terms of what they care about when they are elected to represent you. Pay attention because you never know when you'll be the target of some of that rhetoric and divisive language. So it's upon all of us to take care of ourselves, to uh, look out for ourselves. And for me, my neighbors, friends, and, and pretty much um, uh, everyone, because if we're all doing well, why do we need to, to fuss and fight? You've been listening to Let's Chew the Gum. I hope you guys have a peaceful uh, day, week until um, we can uh, join again in this space. Thank you for your time. Remember to email us at Let's Chew the Gum at gmail.com for show topics if you'd like to be a guest or to leave your comments so thankful to all you listeners around the world of let's chew the gum the podcast where we talk about everything from a to z and just like always we have something for your